you all back in our seats so we could probably reconvene. Susan, are we online? I just started the stream, so if you give me about five seconds, it'll probably be up and going here shortly. Okay, just give us the cue and we'll get started. Stephanie, do you want to come and give us the quarter three update? I see it's not 11.15 anymore, but uh, thank you for coming are we are we live yes you're good to go okay good thank you all right good thank afternoon you. i think we got all fed and watered there so hopefully i don't put you to sleep now as i explain all this um thank you for having me this afternoon i am going to introduce you to the quarterly financial report that i will bring to council every quarter to give you a synopsis of how we're doing with our uh, finances and looking at our budget to variances, all that fun stuff. So I have it up on the screen there. So as I mentioned, I'm going to bring this to you every quarter with the exception of quarter four, which will, uh, I will bring it closer to you the end of March, beginning of April, once we have our draft financial statements ready to go with the auditors. So this first report here is the statement of financial position. And this is for the quarter three for the period ending of September 30th. And so what you have here, the comparables are the year ended amounts for the 2020 year. So as we look at this, I can say that our financial assets are sitting at 133 million, which is pretty good compared to where we ended last year of uh, 111 million. We have for the financial liabilities, we're sitting at roughly um, 9.6 million compared to where we were last at the end of last year, which was about 12 million. So we're down 3 million, which is good, which leaves us with a net financial assets of 123 million. So we've increased that based on where we were at the end of last year. And that's where we obviously would want to be. We want to have more assets than liabilities. And then we have our non-financial assets that we are sitting at 196 million compared to where we were at the end of last year, which was 198 million. So right now we're sitting if at the end of quarter three of an accumulated surplus of 323 million. So this just gives you a snapshot of where we're sitting for our financial position. Then I will give you a report which comes from the, our uh, investors. And I believe they gave you a presentation back in November, the first part of November there. So this will just give you where we're sitting with our long-term investment portfolio and they give kind of a economic synopsis. And the next report is where we're sitting with our restricted surplus. And this one is um, kind of in our policy, uh, which is a policy 2017-PAD-062. Uh, and this just shows you what we would have available in our restricted surplus for future projects that we'd like to fund. This next report that you will see is showing you where the um, over budget expenditure accounts are sitting as of the end of September 30th. And providing this report to you is um, as per our policy that we have, which is a 2018 PAD 025, which is the approval funding and reporting of budget variances. So what this is going to show you is all the accounts that we 
currently over budget on, and I will provide an explanation on perhaps why. Some of it has to do with particular council motions, which have approved for extra spending after the approved budget was finalized earlier this year. Now I should note that even though you see some accounts do have or are over budget, overall the uh, spending of the organization as a whole, we are currently under budget, which you will see on the next report, which gives you the summary by object for all the revenue and expenses, kind of a rolled up version to show you and it compares the final 2021 budget and it shows you our year-to-date totals um, to the end of September 30th. This report is a bit of a, kind of combines three different um, financial reports in one. It kind of, it combines the statement of financial activities, which is your revenue and expenses. And it also shows us the change, statement of change in net financial assets and the statement of cash flows showing your budget, year to date, and the variance. The final report gives you the budget variance report for the summary of all functions, so all the functions within the county, and then few pages later, it will show you every function separately. So you could see where each of the different functions and their spending and where they sit based on revenue and expenses compared to where we were at with the budget. So that's the financial information package as a whole. Um, as mentioned, I won't probably have one for you for quarter four because we will have a draft financial statement um, after we've come nearing the completion of the audit, but I will have something for you for the other quarters, for quarter two and three, and well, I guess quarter one coming in March. Does anybody have any questions? Are there any questions, uh, Greg, please? I'm just noting our uh, from our financial assets, our, our receivables for taxes. Um, there's a, about a $4 million difference between uh, 21 and 2020. Um, is there, is that, is that high? Is that normal? Is that, is that uh, uh, within reason, I guess? So um, the tax deadline just passed so that the taxes were due november 15th or then we did apply an eight percent penalty so there was still time for people then to to pay their taxes and maybe just to uh, expound on that a little bit further we we typically end up collecting just over 98 percent of our current year taxes by by the end of the year um, I know that number has come down since the uh, November 15th deadline came and went kind of a thing. Okay, any other questions? If not, thank you for that report, Stephanie, and I think it gives us all an opportunity or the awareness to know who we talk to if we have concern or questions about <laughs> budgets in the future. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Uh, do we need a motion to accept that report? Not really? No. Okay. <clears throat> so we're on to... Okay, let's uh, move on to uh, agenda item 10.2, the request for recreation funding increase from Division 4. Uh, Lane, thank you, Lane. So this request is before council. Uh, we actually, I should have included this in the first draft of the budget that had been reviewed with council already. 
the Division Four Recreation Board has submitted a request to increase their annual allocation by an additional eighty or eighteen thousand dollars. That would bring the total for Division Four up to forty three thousand dollars per year. The report that I've put together tries to provide some historical information with regards to the way recreation boards have been funded in the past. It's kind of all over the map when it comes to the amounts that are allocated to the different divisions. And also, uh, we have certainly gone through some changes over the past five years, really, with the way recreation funds have been generated and allocated to each of the communities. What we have been doing since 2017, there has been a uniform amount or, or all recreation funds are generated through the municipal mill rate. Prior to that, there was a separate mill rate that was applied to each of the electoral divisions. Um, the information that I provided in my report, there's a couple of tables there. Councillor Holly Johnson would be familiar with the information that was in there because that was information that was shared with the group that um, was involved in providing some guidance for the development of a policy when it comes to allocating funds for improving recreation facilities going forward. Um, the recommendation is that Council support the request to increase the allocation for the Division 4 Recreation Board. It has been a number of years since they have received an increase. It certainly would be warranted and seeking Council's uh, approval to add this to the 2022 budget. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments on that from Council? Uh, Councillor Christman, please. Just a question. In um, our agreements with municipalities, we get um, an accounting. Do we also receive an accounting from the Hamlet boards when we fund recreation? The accounting that we have received from the Hamlet boards has been limited to the amount that they have received and the amount that they have made available to the different organizations that they fund. That is pretty much the extent of it. So it's just a one page summary that confirms how much has gone out by that board to the agencies that they provide funds for. So at no point do we require a financial reporting or financial statement from these boards in general. I'm not saying one over another, I'm in general, we're not. In the past we have not we have not requested that level of detail from the agencies that receive these funds. Um, it's certainly something that could be considered going forward. Just a follow up question though, for, for clarity, basically all of those groups, the recreation boards are ratepayers who have been appointed or volunteered to serve their communities in that capacity in terms of how the money recreation allocation is going to be spent in their area, right? That's right. The boards make the decisions as to how those funds are going to be distributed to the different uh, operators of facilities within their areas. Um, I think the one thing that Councillor Chrisman is probably questioning, with the joint agreements that we have with the urban communities, those agreements and the allocations are subject to the full audit process of those municipalities and we don't have that same reciprocal requirement for reporting purposes with the other recreation boards that are simply operating in each of the hamlets. Further comment? Or? Yeah, just, just wanted to point that out that um, uh, we um, have a responsibility not only to provide but also to be aware of what is out there and what is what it's being used for and allocated to. So I think we need to um, maybe look at that process going forward. Um, uh, and I don't disagree with this increase. Um, back to the point, um, I would. I would make a motion, but I would like to amend it to say that we um, 
receive an annual financial reporting at their year end on a regular basis. Yeah, so when Lane made the comment that, uh, you know, there's a lot of variation between the, the recreation areas, uh, that's accurate. Um, we do get an accounting from each of the rec boards uh, for Div 4 specifically, uh, the rec board meets, we send them the report because we hang on to the dollars for, for that area. So we allocate them funds annually, we credit it to an account that we control. Uh, the rec board gets together, they make their motions, who they will allocate their dollars to. So in 2020, the report I've got in front of me, uh, they send this into administration. You know, Bow City Community Park requested 5,000, they got 5,000. The Rainier Community Hall, same idea, requested five, get five. We cut the checks to those organizations um, from our, our bank account. It comes out of the allocation for Div 4. Um, other areas, you know, GEM, it's similar. Uh, Div 2, Tilly, the dollars go to the rec board proper and they take care of things there, but there could definitely be, like we don't get anything back from the Bow City Community Park to see what the $5,000 was spent on. I don't know if the rec board in Div 4 gets that kind of accounting back, but uh, if there's an interest in having that level of detail come back, what the dollars were, uh, used for at the end of the day, we could look at changing that process. Okay, you're, oh, you're, one at, please. So seeing as you brought up all the other divisions, so when you look at the, like, Division 3, there's $7,000 each year. So if that money was not actually requested from the rec board, it's still sitting there? Yeah, that's correct. It, it, it sits in the account. So if, you know, in a given year, you're allocated 7,000, but the rec board only uh, let 5,000 out. We still have that 2,000 credited. Next year's allocation comes in of 7,200. So you'd have uh, at the rec board level, you know, the 9,000 to work with in the next year. So in some of these divisions, like, do we know how much money is actually still sitting there? Like, do they, are they aware of how much money they might actually have to do stuff with? Yeah, so that that information goes out to the rec board annually. They typically will call in and make a request for it and finance sends the, uh, the information out. We'll provide them with the accounting on our side of things. So for, for Div 4, we'll show them what the credit was and what's come out to date and what they have left to, uh, to work with. Okay, Greg and then Holly, please. I see that Division 5 and 10 are, are lumped together on this report. Is there a reason for that? And uh, it's a pretty substantial uh, amount of, you know, that's allocated to Division 5 and 10. I'm just wondering why it's not separated. Okay, first of all, the table, the information in the table is dated. It goes back to 2020. In 2021, we had a new arrangement that was adopted with the city of Brooks. The city now receives a substantial amount directly and the amount that's made available to the Division 510 Rec Board has been reduced. It's down to 75,000 going forward. With regards to the question as to why they're together, um, Divisions 5 and 10 surround Brooks. The population in that area pretty much utilizes a lot of the services that are available through the city of Brooks. Um, it's considered for all intents and purposes when it comes to recreation, one combined community. And so that's why there's one board that allocates the funds for recreation purposes to any um, groups or organizations that provide services within that area. Okay, thank you, Holly. With um, requesting more information, most of these groups would have to prepare uh, financial statements that go in to keep their status as different societies for their boards. So, um, I mean, how much paper do we need to see, I guess? There's a level of, these are volunteers and a level of trust unless we're seeing a problem. I don't know if we want to see more paper and more requests coming through us unless it's needed. 
Okay. Uh, thank you for that. We have a we have a motion on the floor, right? Um, the the recommendation amended to call for annual reporting coming from Division Four, correct? Um, relative to this request, is that should, I mean thinking about this practically, should we divide the are there the two potentially two motions here? Uh, one, to, you know, to consider the recommendation to to accept the funding, and then is the reporting maybe another another matter? I, go ahead, Councillor Christmas. Um, I would uh, amend my motion to option number one and leave it at that. I made my point. For now, yeah, thank you. Okay, so so we have a motion to accept option number one to approve the funding. Any further questions? All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, do, is there more discussion that we want to have on the reporting? matter or is that something we can take up at another meeting in the future? Seeing none, we'll carry on. Thank you. I can't shout loud enough to get out there without that, I don't think. Okay. Item number 10.3. RMA Fall 21 Convention Resolutions. Uh, those have been sent out to us with an encouragement to consider and read them. Matt, do you want to take us through those or what? And maybe maybe give us some uh, detail with regard to how those are handled and what the expectation will be of us to respond to those in Edmonton. Yeah, I'm going to defer to our experienced council members here. So this will be my first rodeo attending the RMA where we uh, have a vote on the resolutions which are presented. I think typically the practice has been in preparation for attending RMA, council reviews each of the resolutions and uh, determines which way they would like to vote on each of the resolutions going into the, the conference. And I'll uh, defer to those with more experience if I've missed anything there. You want me to start, Kelly? <clears throat> See, now there's five uh, regions in Alberta, and usually, let's say we had a resolution that we wanted to bring to the table. So first it goes then to, in our case, uh, Division One, which is South. And if it gets passed there, then it goes up to Edmonton, and here you see all the different resolutions that are coming forward. So we go over it, but you still, each individual councillor can vote however they choose. And um, the, beforehand you read them, it gets discussed on the floor. Uh, one can amend the resolution if you want to recommend that. However, they would like it in writing beforehand. And maybe Kelly can add something to that. And you have to hear the music that plays while it goes. It is just absolutely amazing. It ties in with the resolution. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so I might add uh, that this is a small list, um, can be upwards of 20 resolutions. So this is a breath of fresh air. Um, the um, resolution session probably will go in one session because there's only 10 here. We um, typically are handed out voting devices, but I saw in the paperwork that this year we have to bring our own device. So whether it's your cell phone or your iPad, something you need to bring, something electronic, and then they will um, tell us how to download the app to vote. So unless you bring your device, you won't be able to vote. We all have one vote. I think okay. that's about it. Okay, so we need to, or it would be prudent of us to consider each of these individually, I guess, eh? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what your practice has been in the past, if you read through these as a group and kind of spit all the, the ideas here, or if you leave it to each council member to take away and Sometimes we don't read the whole thing, but sometimes we just go through the headlines and um, and just see w what we think about it. 
but but, uh, it, but by all means we do not go through all the the reading and, and also if i might add that we do not hard and fast determine our vote today because um, sometimes in the conversation in the moment um, that may change or um, and again it's a, an individual vote like ellen said so um, you may be swayed after you hear the conversation in the convention so just somebody some of us maybe are more familiar with the agenda at, in edmonton that i am when will this when will these resolutions be considered is it wednesday or thursday I, I I saw that, but I didn't retain the information. I think it's maybe Thursday, that, that Thursday morning. Sorry, it took me a while to find the agenda. Oh, that's fine. There we go. Um, resolution session is on Thursday, one o'clock to two fifteen. On when it should be off, and off when it should be on. So I don't know what you're hearing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I have a given uh, in consideration of. of the comments of our of people with experience here. I, w I wonder if it's reasonable for us to uh, consider each resolution briefly, and if we have perspectives on it now, let's let's discuss it at some level. But but maybe prior to Thursday afternoon, we'll have a, a, a time when we get our heads together and review them again briefly. If if we have strong feelings, recognizing the discussion on the floor and with other councils potentially will change our opinion to some extent because uh, you know if you're like me you have have a, a position on some of these things but it might not be the right one necessarily <laughs> in consideration of the concerns that are being raised so I'm going to suggest that we go through each just read the resolution and provide opportunity for anyone here now to to provide a perspective or an opinion on it but but that we look for an opportunity in Edmonton to, to spend a little time to review it uh, if that seems valuable to us at the time. Is that acceptable? Okay. We will go ahead. The first one is the emergency medical services capacity and service delivery in rural Alberta. That was endorsed by the Central District 2, brought forward by Wheatland County. Am I reading that right? Uh, therefore, may it resolve that the rural municipalities of Alberta urge the government of Alberta to remove the requirement for municipalities to contribute 10% of the costs of eligible claims made under the disaster recovery program for disasters within their boundaries. Do, does anyone in the administration have a background to the, that issue? Or do we have any experience with it? Oh, Ellen. Please. I think we missed one. Two, is it 121F? Uh, did you say disaster recovery program cost allocation? I'm sorry. I Yeah, I scrolled right past the, the one I was talking about. Thank no you. worries. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we'll hit two, right, two with one stone here maybe, eh? Okay, I'm sorry. The, the one that I gave the preamble to was, therefore, be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta request the government of Alberta to immediately consult with municipalities to develop a plan to make urgently needed improvements to the capacity, delivery and performance of the emergency medical services system. And if you've read some of the background to that, it has to do with, I think, 911 response times and available ambulance services, particularly in rural areas where uh, uh, this was brought forward by Wheatland. I can imagine that their ambulance services get drawn into the city of Calgary and don't come out uh, the same day sometimes. So, Ellen, uh, please. Now, Susan, not Susan, 
uh, Stuart Lucci's, uh, our uh, rural coordinator, medical coordinator, he has um, brought it to our attention that it is a serious problem. Uh, also, the fire chiefs are very concerned about it. Of course, they are first responders. An ambulance can be moved to Calgary, for example, and as you've heard this morning from the HALO uh, representative, it may stay there. So all of a sudden there is an emergency here and it may have to come from Vauxhall or Strathmore, whatever is available. So it is a serious uh, issue and, and, and response times are unacceptable according to them. Lynette and Anna Dana, please. I think uh, our presentation from HALO this morning spoke to a lot of this. And like she was saying with the ambulances, an ambulance from Medicine Hat can do transport to Calgary and then be stuck there for their entire shift before they're released to go back to Medicine Hat, even if Medicine Hat is in red alert. So it's, there is an issue. Adina? So this is just... Uh, a little bit of information. Um, I was told by one of the EMT guys that when Brooks Ambulance transfers to Calgary or to Medicine Hat, then they wait there until there's something to come back. So we had the experience where my mother fell and had a compound fracture and we waited for an ambulance to come from Bizano because all of Brooks, all the ambulances from Brooks were out of town at the time. So it was like 45 minutes and, you know, um, Mr. Redelback showed up in his um, suburban or whatever to, to be with her and, and to assess things. But we did wait quite a while for, for ambulance. Okay, uh, Kelly, please. And reading the um, resolution to the end, it's also speaking about funding to, um, uh, the same ratio as stars. So this is um, also speaking to HALO's need. Um, I just wanted to point that out. So I think this one will be an easy positive vote in my mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I think we understand the situation and we'll probably get into discussions about it in Edmonton as well. So the second one that I already started to read has to do with disaster recovery program cost allocations. It resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta urge the government of Alberta to remove the requirement for municipalities to contribute 10% of the costs of eligible claims made under the disaster recovery program for disasters within their boundaries. Uh, do we have any background on this, Matt or Lane or anybody? Yeah, so this is just another one in a series of costs being downloaded to uh, municipalities, right? Where in the past you weren't responsible for contributing towards those eligible costs. The uh, province would have a grant program. We haven't tapped into the DRP, Disaster Recovery Program uh, grant too, too much, mm -hmm. thankfully. I mean, you don't want to be in a position where uh, you've got a disaster that you need grant funds for. I think the last time, would have been a number of years ago with some overland flooding and some some damage we had done there. Um, so it, and I think at that time we had claimed around thirty thousand dollars in disaster costs. So it wasn't a huge dollar at that time. But um, if it was more than that, and you have to fund ten percent of it, um, I think the idea of support during a disaster is to uh, take take care and share share the risk, right? And if the province wants to download those costs on you, it's just another one in a series on top of police costing and everything else that they've been uh, throwing at you. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're all explained that it's generally about downloading costs that normally were handled by or covered by the provincial government. Let's move on then to vegetation management on Alberta Provincial Highways. This was brought forward by the County of Two Hills, endorsed by District 5. And reads, be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta advocate to the Alberta government to reinstate a provincial vegetation management plan. Further resolved that 
RMA requests that the Provincial Vege Vegetation Management Plan enhance the previous plan's approach to managing noxious, noxious weeds, prohibited noxious weeds, and any unsafe vegetation on the full rights of way of all primary and secondary provincial highways. And further, that the enhanced plan should include but not be limited to an appropriately timed herbicide application in order to control all legislated weeds and a focus on mowing of the full right of way at a time that limits the spread of weed seeds. So any questions or comments on that? Uh, Kelly, go ahead, please. I could just um, maybe add for information only that um, the province went to uh, a north-south mowing system uh, in the last three years, I would suggest. And um, so that's where this maybe is coming from. They're not liking the intermittent mowing. Um, there was a year actually in my term that they did no mowing. So um, provincial um, Alberta Transportation uh, does what the budget allows them to do, I guess. But um, this motion is advocating for full care and control of the highways on an annual basis. Uh, Lynette, please. Thank you. Um, just, well, some, I'm not a curiosity, I guess. If the provincial government doesn't take care of it and a municipality covers it, can you get any of your costs back or any, was, has there ever been something like that? Like, I don't know. We don't send uh, Todd's crew out onto the uh, provincial highways. So uh, I'm pretty sure they don't have a program for that. Otherwise, we'd probably sign up and have Todd's crew do it because they do a great job on our, our local roads with their spraying program and the uh, vegetation management. It just If they're not going to take care of things, and it just compounds year over year, right? You try to see favors by taking these shortcuts. Right. Anyone else? Oh, uh, Polly and then Adina, please. Because I live on a provincial highway, we used to get mowed twice a year, and now it's down to once a year. So the county roads are mowed better than the highway is at this point. So we mow by our place ourselves. So, I mean, uh, in Cre in Christian, the south, there's always the fire risk of all that grass grown up um, and weeds as well. So I think it's a, it's a valuable motion. Adina, please. Well, I can say as a... Uh, farmer of certified seed and somebody who goes out into the field and pulls that sweet clover myself, I have noticed a huge increase of sweet clover on the highway and it scares me because that's a, get that bright yellow, that, that's a lot of clover to, to pick. Clover's fairly prolific too, so yeah. Thank you. Might need to get, look for central control of this thing. Yeah. Be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta advocate to the government of Alberta for provincial health restrictions and decisions to be made at the provincial level and not downloaded onto municipalities. Uh, this, this is a plea for central control, I guess. I, I'm not sure how you feel about it. I. I have a hard time mostly urging the provincial government to take jurisdiction over our, or to take control over our jurisdiction. So I struggle with this a little bit. Anyone else have, I mean, this is written up. Oh. I would agree. I don't think centralized government is the best way to go. At least this, it's not a perfect system by any means, but allows for some ability to make some decisions. We've seen the circumstances around this issue are re often regional or the impact varies from region to region from time to time. So I would agree with you. Anyone, any other perspectives? I'm sure we'll hear discussion on that as well. Oh, Dan, please. Um, the only thing I can think of that one is when you, uh, when you don't have 
uh, centralized uh, decision making, you end up with multiple different approaches and it just adds to confusion. If it's for, for the health restrictions and the things, um, if, if everybody's doing it their own way and you walk into one place and it's this way and over that place it's that way and then you don't know which way to go anymore. And so I, I can see there's, there's a benefit to one person making, the, making a decision and, and passing things down. About it. Yes, thank you. Oh, Greg and then Kelly, please. To me, this screams COVID situation. So, um, you know, I don't, on one hand, it is, it is good what Dan said uh, about being more centralized. But on the other hand, uh, when you've got some areas that have have uh, these uh, restrictions that that need to be taken, maybe more on a on a uh, individual area basis versus a provin provincial basis, or make, uh, allows municipalities to make their own decision that way. I don't I I don't know enough about it, and I wouldn't even want to try and vote on this because it's it's hard for me to because there's so many this way and that way on this particular issue. It'd be interesting to see what it's, yeah. uh, what's brought up at the convention or the, uh, uh, during this, so. Okay, thanks. Kelly? Yeah, be careful what you wish for because um, decision-making at the local level takes us into all these different um, industries, healthcare. Uh, healthcare is provided by the province. So now are we gonna tell, uh, daycare for example that they don't have yeah i'm just i'm just suggesting that be careful what you wish for <laughs> okay holly please a friend of mine um, he's a corporal in hay river northwest territories and their government locked down the territory for 18 straight months they had no cases at all but the government decided that's what they're going to do so that's the extreme you know but it was really hard to live on lockdown for 18 months and then they were open for the summer and they got locked in again because they actually had an outbreak for the first time but she said it was actually harder on her son because he'd been locked in for so long and then freedom to go back again when there actually was a, it was just it was just tough right it was a weird situation but it, it can get that that was overkill yeah irrespective of the local situation if there's no further comments, I'm sure we'll discuss this some more, but uh, we'll move on to seniors foundation requisitions from the Wheatland County, be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta request the government of Alberta to engage municipalities and membership associations such as Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association in a review of the Alberta Housing Act to provide clarity on requisitioning for capital assets, associated interest costs, and debenture payment obligations for member municipalities. And further, that RMA request the Government of Alberta to review the oversight of the Ministry of Seniors and Housing over housing management bodies and ensure that all HMBs are correctly and consistently requisitioning municipalities under the requirements of the Housing Act Further, that RMA requests that the Government of Alberta provide enhanced training and education, including a training guide to municipal councils and HMBs on the Housing Act and the management body operation and administration regulation to ensure that they have a clear understanding of their financial powers, limitations and responsibilities, including related to the requisitioning and re reserve creation and further that the RMA request the Government of Alberta to amend the Housing Act to clearly state the ability of municipalities to approve or deny requests for capital projects. Uh, we'll probably hear more about that too and there is a lot of background provided here. I've read through some of that. I mean it's, it's related to specific situations where there's probably a a uh, some competition for funds and approvals in areas that uh... yeah i mean when when people receive the tax bill from the seniors foundation it has the county of newell logo on the tax notice right so um 
we we talk about tax room a lot of times in municipal governments. So how much room is there to tax uh, the community? And on that tax notice, the county, the municipality takes a share, the seniors takes a share, and the school foundation takes a share. And it sounds to me like in an instance here, we probably had a case where the seniors share probably exploded beyond what uh, a local council was willing or thought was reasonable to uh, put on on the community. And you're going to be the ones who received the phone calls about the tax bill going through the roof, even though it was out of your control. So I think that's some of the, the story that I'm reading in the tea leaves here. I was involved in that area from a different angle for a few years, and there are issues from time to time. So let's, uh, if there's any other questions or otherwise, we'll move on. Historical resources impact assessments. Uh, be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta request the government of Alberta to review the requirements and costs for historical resources impact assessments be funded by the government of Alberta. Further that the government of Alberta develop a formula for financial compensation to landowners should discoveries of historical resources on the land result in restrictions to land use. I think that's an interest, for, as, uh, from the perspective of a landowner, that's an interesting consideration. Well, I can speak to this one personally because we found out from the oil company that there's a level five on most of our land some because we live within a certain distance from the Bow River and they've decided therefore there could be something on our land. They haven't looked at our land, they know nothing about our land or any land around there. But um, the oil company, uh, they wanted to do something so they have to go and pay 500 bucks to get clearance from someone to say they can do something in an area. It, it, there's a whole lot of stuff around it and landowners don't know what's on our land. You, you have no clue. But, and, and if you actually look at it, you took a picture from Google Earth and went, mm, we'll draw a block like this. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's not a very good system. And they, they have some irrigation land considered this as well, which of course there's nothing left once it's been all tilled up, but it just doesn't make sense. Right, thank you. Any other perspectives or I, th I think that's somewhat, so, or I mean, not, not self-explanatory, but I think as landowners, we can understand the dynamic of this situation. So let's move on. Awareness campaign for small modular reactors. It resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta encourage and collaborate with the government of Alberta to create an awareness campaign to engage with the public on information related to nuclear technology and small modular reactors specifically. Um, there's some background to this also provided. I think, you know, you know if, if unless, unless there's comments about it, I think we, we can deal with it next week, right? Uh, moving on to increasing knowledge sharing among regulators of cannabis production facilities. Be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta Getting into the cannabis a little too quick. Yeah. <laughs> Prevent, yes, thank you. Privatization of land titles. <clears throat> Be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta request that the government of Alberta engage with municipalities and municipal associations to explore assess and mitigate the impacts of privatization of Alberta land titles registry on municipalities prior to the decision on privatization being made. Again, there's a fair bit of background on this that I think is pretty understandable to us in terms of, I don't know if you've all read it, but anybody have comments on this? Kelly, please. Just that this topic is totally flying under the radar of the, of the press, I think. And unless you're a landowner, you don't even deal with land titles. So it may not surface to the, to the regular um, person on the street. But this has the potential to balloon um, expenses to our municipalities uh, if the government gives up this 
uh, office of uh, or this um, service to municipalities and ratepayers. Um, so it's a something that we need to pay attention to because it's been on the books for almost a year now, and I think it's going to pass without our ratepayers even knowing about it, unfortunately, and has huge possibilities for increased costs. It's yeah, a possibility. Yeah. I hate nope. to spread the fear word, but um, what what other uh, privatized um, or pu privatized service that has gone public has gone down in price, right? So just a thought. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Any other comments? Now we'll get into the cannabis, I guess, here. <laughs> Be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta collaborate with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to advocate to Health Canada that municipalities be given open and continuous access to information on all licensed sites of cannabis production within their boundaries. And further, that the RMA advocate to Health Canada that municipalities be given open and continuous information for purposes of compliance monitoring and enforcement, including the results of any investigation conducted by an inspector as described within the Cannabis Act. Uh, sounds to me like some regulation development after the fact, kind of. I mean, they're dealing with a new circumstance here with the legalization of cannabis and some requirements for sounds like reasonable reporting and information sharing with, with municipalities. Hey, I'm sure we'll hear more about it. Anyone have comments? Dan, please. It sounds like they just kind of want to know who's growing um, so they can check up on them, really. I yeah. mean, are we is that something that's a problem in the county of Newell? Is that an issue that's been around anywhere? I mean, it's, I don't think it's something that I've heard anything about. Have, have, we, uh, have we had any issues with the peace officers in the county with that kind of stuff? Not that uh, has risen to the surface and, uh, you know, typically councillors would be some of the first to hear about uh, complaints in the community related to uh, cannabis production, but uh, not a not a big rub here. I, I would agree, except that I reading into this, I think there's there's a potential for variance or, or, or organizations that are in the business, not being what it what's the right word deviant or not compliant. And that's where there would potentially be problems, potentially. And it, it, to me, it would make sense that as a governing body, you would get information when there was non-compliance happening. I think it, I, I'm maybe reading more into this than is there, but I think that's partly what they're asking for. Lynette, go ahead. I think that's exactly what they're looking for. Um, and there was, I think I read it in here, that um, basically somebody that has a permit to grow only so much and then all of a sudden they have way more. So then they're at a different level. So I think that's what they're talking about too. Okay. Moving on, we're at Site C Dam BC Hydro, right? From County of Northern Lights, be it resolved that the rural municipalities of Alberta request the government of Alberta to obtain from the government of British Columbia all technical reports and other relevant information from the BC Hydro Site C project that is currently being withheld from the public. And further, that the government of Alberta use the information collected to conduct an, an independent safety assessment of the structure to ensure that Albertans, as well as extremely important infrastructure, are not being subjected to acceptable risk. Wow. <laughs> um, go ahead, anyone? I, I think this is a fair, probably a local issue that we'll hear more about. Yeah, that's that's a pretty odd topic for us to be wading into Site C Dam. Sorry? I think that's way out of our jurisdiction, anything to do with Site C Dam. Yeah. Okay. okay. Alan? Good point because RMA for the last year or two have really um, asked the municipalities to make these uh, resolutions more like a regional, like a provincial and not just very regional based. They want it more that it pertains to the whole province. They like to go that way. 
Okay, I think we're done. I'm going to suggest we take a smoke break or whatever you want to call it. I'm. <laughs> Sorry. 10.4. Ariana, you've got information for us. 10.4. Um, yeah, so the meeting with MLA Fry that was supposed to be November 19th got cancelled. She's looking for a day that works for you the week of December 13th and possibly some topics for discussion if you're ready to do that. Two things, a date on the, dis the week of December 13th and topics for discussion. Uh, do we have any other activities on the 13th in town or through council? Uh, December 14th, our meeting with the EID. I would suggest we try to piggyback those two meetings on the same date if we can. Uh, is from my perspective that would be valuable um we could meet with her earlier in the morning it, it, you know provided that you get let's set up our meeting date and then what kind of time do we have ariana can we take a day or two to figure the the date out oh yeah i'm sure that's fine okay. um yeah the last time the meeting was scheduled for 11 i believe i would say either just before or just after our, our, our other meeting. And I think there are other activities happening that day, so uh, let's try to do it on the same day, okay? Is that detail enough for now? And um, topics for discussion, Holly? My preference is just before that meeting because it's just easier in the morning sometimes to make things work. Yeah, I would agree. And I was at the Housing Authority meeting on last week. Uh, they said that uh, Michaela Fry was down and she was uh, looking at the Pisano project and that was in her radar. I don't know. I know a little bit about the Pisano project, so I've asked for it to uh, a pact to be put together so we can bring it to council and review it and perhaps we can take that and look at it with Michaela. That's a good point, yeah. Um, any other topics for discussion? Uh, Ellen, please. Sorry, not a topic for discussion, but did you say the 14th or the 16th? I missed that part. Uh, the 14th, I think, was the preferred date in the morning. It sounded like the 15th could be an alternate if uh, the 14th falls through, but we'll pin that date down with uh, the, the EID shortly. And Sorry, this is, this is a bad joke already. I'm, Kelly, go ahead. Um, I, I think it'd be a good opportunity to talk about our ambulance service mm -hmm. delivery. Mm -hmm. I have talked to her one-on-one um, -on -one about that. And so I think she'd be prepared to give us a, a bit of a answer. Yeah, and that's a good point. Anyone, anything else we can, go ahead. Another idea is um, maybe our air ambulance delivery service and try and explain to her the situation the province is putting us in, um, uh, choosing or, you know, multiplying our donations in the southeast um, where the north doesn't have that problem. They all are serviced by stars. Right. So um, maybe get her comments on that topic as well. Sure. Good point. Okay, thank you. Let's move. Oh, sorry, Ellen. Go ahead. Sorry about this. Just again, scheduling um, issue. December the 16th, she is already, um, MLA Fry, is it now, is already meeting with us at six o'clock in Brooks. Can we not just make it a little bit sooner? Because she, does she not drive in from Medicine Hat? She always is there at the Joint Municipal, is she not? Good point. Good point. Okay, that's a, that's a good point that can be considered as we discuss the details. 10-5, uh, Joint Municipal Meeting. Uh, Ariana, you've got some 
information on us for us on that? Yes. So the joint municipal meeting is the meeting, as was discussed earlier, with between all the municipalities in the county, plus uh, MP Martin Shields and MLA Fry. Um, it's going to be December 16th and hosted by the city in Brooks. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. I'm not sure where exactly they're having it yet. Um, usually it starts with dinner and then you follow with the meeting afterwards. Uh, this is just uh, another call for any items you'd like to discuss with the municipalities in that group setting. Okay, thank you, Arianna. Is there, are there specific items that we need to take up with the municipalities? Well, we can revisit that if we need to as well. Uh, Ten six, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities annual conferences, and you've got information for us on that as well, right, Ariana? Yes, it's all me. Um, okay, so the Federation of Canadian Municipalities they have a large annual convention every year. They usually try to sometimes it's in the eastern provinces sometimes in the western provinces um they did not have it in person last year obviously due to covid there was an online component oh what else to say so we usually select either two or three counselors to attend we send two to the ones that are farther away and then three to the ones that are closer just so every counselor gets a chance to attend within your four-year term once. Um, I've got the dates and locations for the conferences for the next four years. So 2022 is in Regina, 2023 is Toronto, 2024 is Calgary, and 2025 is Ottawa. They said it was unconfirmed and I'm not sure whether that's the location that was unconfirmed or the dates that are confirmed. They're usually just the end of May, beginning of June. Um, so yeah, uh, I talked to them unofficially. They are planning an online component for the following year. They don't know exactly what that's going to look like. So, but we can figure out exact attendance details when it gets closer. Uh, the reason we're doing this now is because you have to book the hotel rooms in January. And if you're not on top of that, you miss out. <laughs> and it's not, not a good time for me. So, yeah, this is mostly about me getting stuff set out so I can book your hotel rooms and just get on with my life. Um, so, yeah, I have everyone's name printed out on a little blue piece of paper in the official colander that we draw names from. Um, so I will get Lane to pick out three for Saskatchewan. First one is Neil. Second is Arno. And third is Lynette. Definitely don't want to be sleeping out on the streets in Regina either, so we'll get ahead of it here. So. All right, next, next is two names for Toronto in 2023. Holly. Ellen. Now we're drawing three for Calgary in 2024. Adina. <laughs> Dan. Three 
Greg. So that leaves the last two. That leaves the last two for Ottawa, maybe. Somewhere in the east. That's Kelly and Amanda. Yay. Thank you. Okay, so that's pardon me. Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. Right? But go ahead. I should also mention, Ed, if it conflicts with your schedule at any time, you could switch with somebody or we could do a redraw or whatever. It's not set in stone, but at least I have a plan for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 10-7, counselor payment sheets. Who takes us through that? Uh, so the committee met this morning. I think past practice is uh, you make a motion to accept the councillor payment sheets. Any adjustments will show up on uh, next pay, if I'm right. <laughs> so, Dan, please. We were talking about this. Our policy is half hour rounding. Um, half hour, every portion thereof, you, you round up. Um, but we had some issues, not issues, there were some of us were rounded to quarter hours and some were rounded to half hours. So our policy is half hour. Um, of course, that's going to be your discretion. If you're a couple minutes over, if you're going to go a half an hour, that's within the policy. Um, but when we're going to be looking for it, we're going to be looking for everyone being the same. If we're all there at the same time. Why is this one a quarter hour difference than that one? So stick with the policy to make it simple. But uh, at the same time, if, you, if you're, you gotta use some discretion and we'll all do that. I don't think any of us are gonna charge a half an hour for a two minute over. I mean, that doesn't seem right, but, um, but anyways, that's the kind of thing that I think we'll, from seeing what we're, from this morning, that's what we're gonna be seeing and looking for. And saying that, I'd make a motion to uh, accept the timesheets the way they are. Okay. Thank you. Are, you've reviewed them. They're not. They're not visible to us, are they? I, and it's fine with me. I, I just don't. I, oh, are they? Okay, they're in the package. Fine. Yeah, good. Any further discussion around the motion? Ariana, did you have a question? I do have a question. Was that as presenter? Did you have changes that you made? Did we actually make that change? This morning we didn't. We we've noticed the change to be made, right? Yeah. We haven't made that change yet. Jackie did make the changes uh, to reflect all of them on the same, and there was just the one issue with the two of you, and we're going to reflect that in next month's pay period. Okay. So if we accept them as presented, and then change them, we'll have to do another motion next month, right? Probably. Um, previous practice, there there was a report that was presented and there was a list of changes presented by the Compensation Review Committee. So the motion is, it's either accepted as presented or accepted with the amendments recommended by the Councillor Compensation Review Committee. The second one is the with motion the you want to make. Yeah. A motion to accept with the amendments. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? All in favor, please indicate. Oh, sorry, Holly, you had a question? Just looking through it, I was kind of confused about the meal portion because I, I see in some cases lunch was claimed. Like if we're, if we're not being given, uh, if Ariane is not arranging our meal, the, the, you claim lunch even though we're this close to home? Is that the expectation? The policy is if you're away from home over your lunch break, you're allowed to claim a certain amount for lunch. Um, some people did claim that, some of us didn't. So Jackie went ahead and made that change for us all. Um, but yeah, that's the policy. I'm gonna see if I can look it up real quick. But there's, 
the, the policy is, it, it states it all pretty clearly as to what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not supposed to be doing. But basically, yeah, if you're away over lunch break, you claim a lunch. If you're at a conference that supplies a lunch, you don't, you don't claim lunch. And just a basic amount. I forget what they are, but I can pull it up. Okay. Right, Neil, please. Yeah, do we claim the hour over lunch plus the meal? Yep, you, you claim from the time you start to the time, like today we were here over lunch, that still is, it's all included. It's time from nine o'clock or 10 o'clock that we started this morning our meetings to time we're done. Uh, just a question for the committee that's looking at this. I, I'm assuming that meetings that we're all at, it's gonna be a flat number. I mean, somebody else is keeping track of that, right? Because it sure helps me. <laughs> Yo, I'll enter it, but if I get it wrong, you'll fix it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I care, that's good. <laughs> that's what I was saying about the, uh, about the rounding. Yeah. Like we, we're gonna notice that, okay, you rounded a quarter hour, you rounded a half an hour, Yeah. so. Do it, do it the way you think is right, yeah. and then in the end, it, if we're all there the same, like the time, it all needs to be the same. Yeah, good. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please indicate. Okay, that's carried. Thank you. We're down to item seven point or ten point eight. Request for functions of council. Uh, who takes us through that? What's that? Uh, oh, Ke Kelly, please. I happen to have one. We received an email yesterday um, where the province is coming around to our municipalities to talk about um, police engagement. And so I would like to make a motion that we, um, that council uh, if they choose, if they can fit it into their day timer, that they attend uh, the police engagement here in Brooks from 2 to 4.30 on January 27th as a function of council. I think it's important that we all get up to date on this downloading of police costs. Yeah, I would agree. Thank you for that perspective. Any other comments? Holly, please. Just a clarification, I guess, when there is an event such as that, is it generally that all of council goes or certain people go and then present back? What has been the expectation? It's, it's always been how it's presented here at council. We discuss it. So if you feel strongly that not all of us need to go, then you could speak up now and say, no, I think only five should go. So it's a conversation that we have. But I feel strongly that these, this six-figure uh, cost that's coming our way for policing needs to be well understood by this council. Okay. Okay, thank you. Further discussion about that? Neil? Yeah, I think on especially this issue, it's really not fair to pick five or four or three because Amanda might have a real strong opinion. Her name doesn't get drawn out of the hat. She's still re representing her people with her opinion. The same goes for every one of us. Uh, I'd go any committee, all 10, three. Not everybody's going to show up all the time anyway, but those uh, picking is pretty hard and not fair. Yeah. Everybody good with that? Okay. Uh, we don't need to talk, talk about it. Okay, let's, uh, you, you made a motion, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed that. So the motion that we attend, did you have a question, Ariana? No, motion that we attend on January 7th, the provincial government's, 27th, uh, the uh, provincial government's policing consultation here in Brooks. Alternatively, there will be sessions in other communities as well that people could attend, uh, but we probably can, uh, Consider that later on if we need to, too. Further comment? 
No, I was ready to vote. Okay, good. Um, but I would like to make the comment that the closest one to us is here yes, in Brooks, yeah, so, absolutely. but it is an option. The other thing I could add is that you need to um, register online through Eventbrite through the email that you received. And it's just a click of a few buttons and you'll be registered. There's no cost to register. Okay. Thank you, Ariana. Oh, now I do have something to add. Oh. Um, if you if you don't want to log into Eventbrite, I'm happy to do the registration for you. Okay. Thank you. All in favor of the motion that we attend that function? Thank you. That's carried. Anything else under uh, request for functions of council? Amanda, please. Uh, yes, I'd like to know um, when we meet with our, uh, the ministers at the conference the day before, what topics we'll be talking about, and I know the topics, but are we going to, we only have 20 minutes, so, and who, are we all going, are some of us going, what's the scoop on that one? That's a good question, and we will be discussing that, right, Matt, Matt you had that coming further down the yeah, we'll probably discuss that in camera a little later, if that's acceptable. Okay. Any other items? Post agenda items. There were none, I don't think, so we move to information items. We've had... Oh, what did I miss? Oh, right. Thank you. Item number 11, committee reports. Uh, what do we have for committee reports? Anyone have a re committee report? <laughs> oh, Kelly, please. I didn't write it out, um, and we have done both verbal and written out ahead of time before, so whatever uh, you're comfortable with. But I would like to um, let you know that joint services met and that uh, I believe every one of us on joint services from every municipality are new except our CAOs. So it's, um, it's a new ball game. Um, there's lots of relationships to be built and uh, some policy and procedures opportunities, I believe, from my experience at the first meeting. I'll just leave it at that, I think. <laughs> Imagine. Okay, thank you. Any other committee reports? Dan and I, together with Matt and several other uh, support their, their staff attended the emergency preparedness conference. Is that what you'd call that? Yeah. Do you have any comments on that, Dan? I think it was a good session. Yeah, that was a good session. There was, uh, there was a whole lot to that that you just don't realize is going on. Um, they got it. They got it nailed down pretty good, it seems like, but uh, it's um, just like the search and rescue. If you don't know they're there, uh, it's, it's hard to know what they do. So learning that it's there and learning that these plans are in place makes a, makes a huge difference. Um, I don't know. I, I was impressed by it all. But, um, the only one, not, not about that, but the, the Dutch's IDP committee hasn't done anything yet, but we did finally arrange a meeting. So we got that nailed down. Nothing's happened, but at least something's going to happen. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Greg? I just want to expand on the Joint Services Committee um, report. Uh, the Joint Services Committee um, have approved a brochure uh, for the pathway to run to um, Kimbrook Park. And uh, basically it's um, a, a request for donations pamphlet. So it was quite, quite interesting. Um, everybody is very um, gung-ho about this and, and uh, excited about this project. So, so hopefully we can get some donations uh, from the outside community, uh, corporate donations. Um, and what was the other, other thing that, we, uh, that was under discussion? Oh, they did set up a committee within the Joint Services Committee uh, for the pathway to the uh, to Kimbrook and um, I volunteered myself to sit on that committee 
on behalf of the county. Um, not sure if I need permission for that. Matt says, no, if you're volunteering to do it, then you're okay. So, so I'm going to be sitting on that, that committee to, and uh, I'll report back to council as far as how that goes. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Neil, you had a comment? Uh, yeah, you didn't read the paper. I was in favor of that pathway. And I said it at the joint services meeting. I'm not against the pathway, but I'm against all that money and maybe not that long of a pathway. I think this thing is getting ahead of us. I think it started really fast. Before you know it, bang, we got a pathway coming. I've actually had pretty good response on my telephone for the comments that I made in the paper. Uh, I, I'm not going to continue videoing <coughs> video it, videoing it. Uh, if this council is all in favor of it, but I've even spoken to some of our councillors here, and this thing isn't a goal in a lot of people's heads, and we're just proceeding with it as if it's out getting donations already. Like, uh, I don't know, where, where are we sitting on it? We have to have that discussion because we're, we're putting in a million bucks. Yeah, it's, uh, and I, what's the background? Are we missing background on this that, that they got here ahead of us? or? Yeah, this, yeah is, <laughs> this is one of the items that uh, you inherit from a previous council. So uh, both the City of Brooks Council and the County of Newell Council have previously committed uh, $700,000 each towards the pathway uh, with the idea that the other million dollars to get the project off the ground needs to be coming from the community. That's your, uh, that's your social support, your license that uh, the community wants the thing. If the million dollars isn't uh, forthcoming from the community, well, the project's not going to get too much further off the ground, kind of a thing, right? So, is is there a time frame on that commitment? That's a good question. The motion didn't include a, a time frame when we when council passed it. I'm thinking the grant has a timeline on it, though, right? The stimulus grant. Uh, the stimulus grant, so the 2.4 kilometers is going to be built for sure. So that, that part's going to be done. The, the rest of the way from Township Road 18-2 to the uh, park, that's the piece at risk of uh, not being completed if the fundraising dollars don't uh, materialize. Yeah. So uh, the, the Pathway Committee's hope is that uh, the donations come in and the entire length of the thing can be constructed in 2022. Okay. Any fur further comments or questions? Oh, Holly, please. So the county is putting in closer to 1.3 then because it's the 600,000 stimulus money of ours. It's going for the first part and then another 700,000. Yeah, so the stimulus portion, yeah, that, that is the county stimulus dollars going to that first 2.4, and then the rest of the distance, the 700, 700 from uh, both the city and the county, and then looking for that million dollars from corporate citizens, whoever wants to uh, see that pathway built. So that's, that's the challenge going out to the community is, uh, do you want this thing bad enough to uh, put a million of your, your dollars into it? Go ahead, Kelly. So basically, if the million dollars is not raised by community, the walking path will end at the Range Road. Um, we um, and seven hundred thousand is the city's in our coffers that has been um, sitting there for their use. And they designated that 700,000 to go to this pathway. So although it seems like 1.4 is coming from the county, that's not the case. 700,000 is the city's from previous arrangement. It's sitting in the county coffers. Um, and then the other 700 is stimulus dollars that has a timeline on it and approved by the province. Okay, thank you. Ellen? Holly, I shouldn't speak for you, but I think, Holly, did you not mean, through the chair, that $700,000 that we matched the city 
they used our grant money, if you will, the $700,000 and the $550,000 that would make over a million dollars for our contribution because that is still um, stimulus money that was for the county. Am I right in saying that? So, so what we're saying is that the, the city's contribution came from the county, uh, which was allocated to the city to use at their discretion, and they've decided to put it towards the pathway, and then we, and then council additionally committed to another seven hundred thousand dollars okay i think that explains maybe the background or where it's at neil did you have another comment yeah no that's fine just i didn't realize that we'd gone quite that far i mean there's still i think we need camp grounds more than we need a trail because kenbrook is full on any given weekend, you can't even get in. Yeah. And if you want to spend $3 million, you could do half a rolling hills for that kind of money. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. Okay, Alan? See, it used to be uh, when the county uh, cost shared with other municipalities in our region, uh, we, there was no, um, no stipulation whatsoever. They could use it for whatever they wanted. However, in this latest, uh, perhaps the last couple of three years, uh, the county has said, uh, let's use this money that was allocated to the city, for example, that it should have a regional um, destination for it, if you will. Am I right in that? Yeah, the, the idea behind the uh, regional enhancement and cooperation agreement was always uh, looking at infrastructure or projects that would have a regional benefit to it. Okay. Oh, a colleague, please. One more clarification point from back to what Neil said. So 700,000 the county um, gave is committed money. Like that's done, done deal. So you tell me? Well, I mean, I don't know how how much uh, unwinding of things this council wants to do of the uh, previous council direction. I guess that's always your your prerogative. Um, in terms of administration, when we receive a resolution from council, we start acting on that that resolution. It sets the course. So I think. It gets a little dangerous when you want to backtrack on previous resolutions, right? It really starts to muddy the waters. Great, thank you. Yeah, can we move on? Or further discussion? No, I'm not happy, but I'm good. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll see how this how this develops. I think there's some context in which this may surface. I'll be counting the tremendous amount of campers walking up and down that road. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, where are we at? Yeah, information items, is there any? Right, yeah. No questions with regard to the, to the information items. Then we'll move on to uh, thirteen two payment registers. What? Yeah, and that's just another information item. So if there's any oh, I see. All oh, those are those things we can oh, okay. address. Them. I'm I'm sorry. I'm still getting familiar with with our agenda here, but these are all information items. If there's any questions around any any of that, the, the minibus, right? Strategic priorities chart, payment registers. Seeing none, we'll move on. And uh, we need a motion to go in camera, I believe. Uh, Holly, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Please indicate. It's carried. Okay, we will reconvene. We're getting very close to the end of our agenda. Is there any uh, business uh, that we need to take care of? Matt, please.
I think just the uh, the motion for uh, that was requested by staff related to the municipal reserve lot in Lake Newell Resort, and I can uh, articulate that motion for for council. Um, I think the motion was uh, that council approve uh, the request to subdivide an approximate 0.38 acre parcel from Plan 0514207. Block 5, Lot 25, Municipal Reserve, and that the Municipal Reserve designation be removed and sold to the adjacent landowner. Someone willing to move that? Lynette, please. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, uh, Kelly, please. Do you need clarity as to price and costs included? We could add that to the motion that uh, the purchaser is responsible for subdivision costs and related closing costs. In addition to market value, right. Okay, good with that. All in favor of the motion, please indicate. That's carried, thank you. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Any other business? Is that uh, HALO funding on the next agenda or, or where, where do we leave that? Thanks for that. That was, uh, that was a big item actually, right? So uh, I guess um, we'll leave that to council to guide administration what you'd like to do with both of those funding requests if you'd like to see a uh, separate request for decision brought back at the next meeting, which will be December 9th and the passing of our, our interim budget. Or if you'd like to make the motions now, whether you approve or deny uh, the funding requests that were put before you. Uh, Alberta S Search and Rescue was looking for 5,000 and uh, HALO was looking for a commitment of uh, 150,000. So um, whichever way council would prefer to, uh, to deal with that. If you dealt with it at this meeting, we'd have uh, a cleaner interim budget package for you to look at, but we're good either way. What is your pleasure? We can oh, deal with yeah. it. Is it. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I am kind of, I'm definitely on board with giving HALO um, more money. Um, my thinking was uh, that the amount that they're asking for puts us over and above the the one third of what they're what they're saying. But we also want to see a higher level of service from them. So maybe we can be the nudge in that direction to get Halo um, into enough funding to uh, provide 24/7, uh, leading the way as as we talked about earlier. Um, so I was thinking, yeah, maybe we should just give them that amount um, and and then try to press them to match those two thirds and get the increased level from everyone else so that we can get 24 seven uh, service from HALO. Is, is that a given with the funding, with the additional funding? No, I mean, so strings attached. Yeah, it, it's, there's no, no strings attached and there's no conditions of it, it's just, that you're, you're hoping that that's what they'll do. When the funding levels increase, I think that's their biggest drawback from, from taking that step. As he explained, they, they can't do a part of it. That's once they start the first one, they have to go all in on all of it. So um, once they get up to that level of funding, then they can do it. But at, as it says right now, they're not quite there. But if everyone steps up and says, okay, we wanna get you there, then they might get there. Greg? Um, Matt, is there anything in the budget right now with respect to HALO? Yeah, so typically we, there were two years where the county provide us, provided a 75 cent per capita contribution. That was, I think, 15 and 16. And then since then it bumped up to a dollar per capita. Uh, so it's about 7,500. That covers about the average cost of a flight um, for them to respond to. We give, uh, stars two dollars per capita um, i think we summarized you know the contributions that you see uh, coming from 
our other municipal partners there to uh, HALO. The uh, Cypress County contributes $300,000 annually, um, 40 miles contributing $50,000 annually. Our total contribution to date is uh, just over 47,900 for, for the years that we've uh, funded. So it's been about seven years. <coughs> uh, Kelly, please, you have a so I just want to remind you that it's 45, 40 minutes of worth of service to, to this service center. To get to the west side, it's a minimum of an hour. So our service delivery area is from STARS on the west side. I want to point that out. So keep that in mind. They will be looking at this, at whatever we do today, and uh, they'll be wanting stars that is will be wanting the same or similar just an fy fyi because we are not um, and again stars controls the dispatch so stars will take the majority of the calls whenever they can thank you that's good advice neil yeah i agree we have to uh, kind of watch the stars so I could expect to give them a little bit more too. But these other two counties stepping up the way they did and the, the minimal amount that we've put in makes me think we kind of missed the boat on that. And I really thought that presentation was fantastic. Like I would support the one third of what Cypress County puts in for our population and that works out to be $150,000. 100000 yeah, if we were to stay true to that model, we should be putting a hundred thousand dollars. Well, a hundred thousand still divided by seventy-five hundred is twelve, thirteen bucks a head, isn't it? Adina, I just wanted to point out: Stars does uh, receive funding from a much larger area than Halo does, so um, they they fundraise and they're getting money from all over Alberta, whereas Halo is just for Southern Alberta. And um, I, I, I'm kind of embarrassed that we've only ever given them $7,500 a year. But I also feel like maybe there's more com middle ground than like 7,500 and now we're at 150. So somewhere in there would be appropriate. Oh, for seven, we're looking at it. We're basically funding out of the new budget, right? So there's no urgency to take a position on that today is there i'm not trying to delay it if we're not ready if it sounds like some more discussion might be valuable for us but i i i also see the clock is ticking and we need to move on neil did you have a comment another one? Oh, I, I see pretty much agreement here with it with the funding i don't i think we could move ahead today sorry i think we can move ahead today with the moment okay. Uh, let's. I'm prepared to entertain a motion if we're ready to make one. We think in the uh, the full amount or or the, uh, the one third. A third of the hundred thousand uh, dollars, please. Lynette has it. They were asking for a commitment. Like they're not just asking for the hundred and fifty this year. They want a five year commitment. So that's part of what we need to think about as well. So the consensus seems to be looking around the hundred thousand to keep with keep on par with the rest of the counties. Is is that what seems to be the consensus? Alan yeah, I... was my recollection that it was fifty thousand dollars that forty mark put in yearly, right? Then when you prorated it to their population and ours, we owe a hundred thousand dollars to be on par with the others. And then I'm Totally happy with that, uh, with that number. Um, oh, Holly and then Dan? I guess the other, other thing to look at is how much they're servicing each area. If you look at that as well, we're, we're 10 to 15% of their calls, right? So it's a bit different again. I don't know what the right answer is. I'm just throwing out information. Um, Dan? Yeah. We're at around a little over 10% for average of their calls. Um, 
by the budget of 300 or three million dollars 10 percent of that is 300,000 one third of that is a hundred thousand dollars a year and we're keeping with the plan that they're hoping to have um, and that would that would make up maybe a little bit for the uh, lack of funding we've given them over the years but they did want commitment they were asking for hundred and fifty thousand dollars committed per year for the next five years I'll make a motion that we offer a hundred thousand dollars a year committed for the next three years So the motion is for three years at $100,000. Okay. I'm happy with that. Any further discussion? Holly? Uh, Matt, what's your opinion? <laughs> it's $100,000, right? Uh, um, in comparison with what uh, the other municipalities are doing, um, Cyprus takes that hero funding model, so the third, third, third. Uh, so the 100,000 would be right in line with uh, the philosophy that Cyprus has, has adopted. It is $100,000. I hesitate making a, a long-term commitment. I think the three years is, is good because it keeps you within your your term as council kind of a thing. Um, and I, I think really at the end of the day, council has to be comfortable that uh, this is a, a service level that you're, you're willing to defend to your ratepayers and feel comfortable having those conversations that uh, we're gonna back Halo in a, a big way. Neil? Well, at our, at our forum, that's where, I, I didn't even know what Halo was until the forum came along. There wasn't one person in the audience that didn't support Halo stars, that kind of thing. And that's what got me on board. I, I think, I think there is a real consideration around the fact that stars will be on us for the same kind of thing. And, and there's some history to this that I, and I don't understand it either. I'm all in favor of, I'm just, I'm not trying to swear <laughs> or from the chair trying to sway anything. I'm just saying that I, I've been wondering if there's some background information that we're missing somewhere because I've, I've noticed this over a period of years, other in jurisdictions to the south too, where they've, they've had to make big campaigns. You know, a, uh, a year ago last March, they were just about ready to fold up because they didn't have the funding. I was at a political meeting just as a spectator and and, and heard some of that. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that we have the information that we need to make a good decision here, because I, I, I fully agree that the higher level of service is what we want. Uh, Lynette, please. Would we be able to find out what percentage of stars we actually are, like our usage of stars, like so that, because if you're saying stars is gonna come at us wanting more too, where are we sitting like we rationally figured this out as to our percentage of use can you answer that yeah the stars has been in before they've they've provided that kind of information so if you know you, you're going to need to be comfortable with whatever approach you take uh, the motion is a hundred thousand so that's really based on the our share of the call volume for for halos right so ten percent of a third of their uh their business there. Um, so you'd want to be comfortable applying the same standard to, uh, to STARS. Well, for Neil? The, the way he explained it, I have, I have no problem whatsoever that that went up because we were so low. And if it's the same with STARS, don't forget, we're only giving two bucks to STARS. And if other jurisdictions can show us that a formula like what Halo came up with today and we have to take stars up a little bit too. I don't have a problem with that. We got to pay our own way for this service. And 7,500 and, and two bucks a head isn't paying our own way. And I'm, I'm not throwing money away. I'm as cheap as that all of you put together. Uh, Kelly? Um, the
Um, so we have to remember that stars dictates the call outs. So stars are going to take the lion's share of the calls. Um, so it's a skewed um, system. Halo's in a rough spot. They are totally. If you want to know more about it, go to the HEMS review, H-E-M-S. It was just completed. Um, HALO is calling for a new review because they didn't feel it was um, as clean or as clear a report as what they would have liked to see. But um, do read the 300 pages and, and come to your own decision. 100,000 from 7,500 is a big amount. Is it our responsibility as counselors to collect that donation money and not allow our ratepayers to pay their own way? I mean, that's the other question I had for him, but we ran out of time. Where is fee for service? So when we go to a fire, we charge the house owner for that service. If that house owner does not have insurance, as a county, we can back off out of compassion. But why do we have to fund the flight? I'm, I'm of a different color horse here, you guys, maybe, but think about it. Why should we fully fund all those flights? Where is personal insurance? Where is personal responsibility for riding that bull or whatever the incident is? Um, it's, it's, it's a, it is not our responsibility to fund uh, emergency response to the nth degree. That's what insurance is for. Greg and then Holly. I'm blinking too. Okay, so um, insurance-wise, uh, from how it works with fire calls within your district, within your municipality, the fire department comes out, puts out the fire, there's no cost. The municipality picks that up. The insurance company doesn't, doesn't pay for that, uh, unless it's brought in from outside of the jurisdiction. So if Tilly responded to a call to Brooks, then you would get a bill for that. So, um, that is actually not correct. Okay. Oh, okay. If, okay. if they come to my farm, the county of Newell can send me a bill. And, and that's common practice. If the, I go, if I come to you and say I have compassion, I don't have insurance, that's when it comes to council for us to discuss. Uh, I'll take. Holly and then Greg and then I'm going to call a question and I'll have a comment before that. My comment was just I think people need to go home and think about this. I don't think we're ready to make any kind of a decision today. There's lots of discussion. There's lots of thoughts. I think everyone's going to percolate on it a bit. Not that we don't want to support anybody. It's just the amount needs some more thinking is what I'm, where I'm coming from. I'm not ready to make a decision today. Greg, thank you. I'm in agreement with Holly and I um, there's no insurance that'll pay for Halo to come out to someone's house and bill for it. No. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, no, that's not. There's I'm going to no coverage for that. Either call unless the motion is withdrawn. I'm going to call the question. Uh, so uh, the motion reads. No, I, I, you know what? I'm going to keep the motion on the table, and the motion is that we uh, offer up a hundred thousand dollars per year for the next three years to HALO, and if it gets defeated, then that's fine. I'm pretty strong on this. Um, I'm, I'm, if we're gonna be spending money, that's money I'm okay with spending, and there's almost no ratepayers there that would be upset about that one. So I'm gonna let the team let it stand, and we'll put it to a vote today, and if it comes up later after a defeat on this one, then fine, we can hash out some better numbers, but I'll keep the motion on the table and we'll call the question. 
Okay, I, 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 will, I will call the question then. Uh, all in, oh, yeah, one more comment. I have a quick question. Um, the reason why I am not going to vote in favor, I'm just going to mention it, is he said something earlier, the CAO from HALO, said something about that was the, the capital expenses were not included in that number. That was just operating. And that, I'd like to do some more research on that. So before I can make that decision, so that's why I'm out. <laughs> okay, all in favor of the motion, please indicate. <clears throat> Opposed? I can't abstain. Yeah. Okay, that, that motion is defeated. <clears throat> I'm, I'm of the perspective that we can revisit this, this discussion at another meeting, and I heard that from a number of you, so I think that uh, uh, no damage. With that, any other business? Huh? Alberta Rescue. Alberta Rescue. Did you want to deal with that one <coughs> as well, or do you want to deal with it uh, at another meal? Or oh, sorry, I want to deal with it, but I want to deal with this. I would want it to deal with this one too. So why don't we leave them both till next meeting? Greg. I'm okay with making a motion for the five thousand dollars to Alberta Rescue. Okay. Uh, do you have an opinion? I would echo that because um, they're all volunteers. They, some pay for their own uh, equipment, I think, or what have you. So I, I'm I'm okay with the five thousand. Okay. Thank you, Holly, and then Amanda. I believe there was a question whether it's one time or ongoing. Wasn't that part of the request as well? Amanda? I think it was uh, 5000 per year for five-year commitment. That's what they were looking for. We can, it's, it's our decision about how much we give them and, and that will, whether we make a commit, longer-term commitment or not, I think that's up, up to us. But the motion was 5000 Did we have a motion? Okay. I'd like to add that to the motion of the $5,000 commitment per year for five years. Okay, Holly. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please indicate. Opposed, that's carried. Thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, this was a long day.